You're still watching Ways Now. Today is World Sight Day. Um, it's an annual day of awareness held on the second Thursday of October to focus global attention on visual impairments, including blindness. It was initiated by the Sight First campaign of Lions Club International Foundation in 2000. World Sight Day is an opportunity to raise awareness of the importance of eye care and to promote the prevention of blindness. It is also a day to advocate for people who are blind or visually impaired and to ensure that they have access to the services and support they need. I don't know, did you ever have any eye care? I think I had one. Yeah, I think it was last year. Was, we went for a checkup and all of that. Because you have too much screen, so my, my eyes get very teary these days and itchy and all of that. So when the doctor, I the ophthalmologist checked my eyes and said that for this eye, that she's seen some irregularities, like presenting like catara, I say catawa. Mm -hmm. But we don't have the, um, we don't have the, no, glau glaucoma. Mm -hmm. they, we don't have glaucoma in my family. So nobody has gone, because I know that glaucoma is highly um, um, tied to like hereditary, hereditary whatever. Or at least, thankfully, when I went for the other, because they now had to refer me to another. They didn't have the equipment for the, that particular test. They had to refer me. When I checked this, everything was normal. I don't go to a clinic after that. <laughs> <laughs> Even though my eyes have been itching me. <laughs> like, lately, my eyes have been itching me terribly. I'll just wake up and have my eyes tears and all of that. <laughs> I need to go and see the ophthalmologist. Yeah. Oh, I know, may, but after that, I don't ask her. I said, uh -huh. you will not see me again. And not be who you see, then you go tell that kind of thing. But I want to advocate, please, oh, glaucoma mm. ahead is very scary because you can literally sleep seeing and wake up blind. Yeah. Mm. So, uh, yeah, and it's actually preventable. Yeah. So it's something that you just need, especially if you've had cases of people going blind in your family, you mm. just need to go and get your eyes. Uh, so once you know that there's a history of glaucoma yeah. in your family, you need to do regular checks. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. 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 All interesting. Right. Very interesting. You have your own story. Abby. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> just like you said, hereditary, you know, um, my dad, you know, he had um, glaucoma, which is, of course, um, towards the later years of his life, you know, just before he passed, mm -hmm. he had um, diabetes. Mm -hmm. And, of course, that's also a byproduct of, um, you know, you begin to have all these things, like coma, cataract, and all that. But, um, like um, you advocated for, I mean, it's important that um, once you know that there is a history, you know, you have to take proper care. So I remembered when I did my checkup after he, I think after he passed. <laughs> In fact, the way I threatened the doctor, she, I mean, the, the person was a lady. I was like, Think very carefully before you say whatever you want to say <laughs> to me. <laughs> she just said laughing, you know. But of course, um, I had to do eye mapping, you know, all that just to be sure. Yeah, there were, there were some irregularities, I mean, you know, but it was scary, you know, getting that kind of news. So you wake up or you do anything, you're extra conscious of the fact that, uh, like, I'm so very... checks. Because that's the only way to present yeah. it, to prevent yeah. it. It yeah. will happen... Yeah. You know, if you do not have yeah. one, because they, they will not put you on some medications. Because yeah. I yeah. have a friend that mm. she's also predisposed to glaucoma. So mm. she was the one that even told me, please just go and check. Yeah. I said, but we don't have enough. Go and check. Yeah. Since they told you that they saw something funny. Yeah. So they checked it and yeah. it was my right eye mm. and everything was fine. Mm. They said maybe it was just, you know. Stress and all Or they did some, uh, wow. Yeah, that, that mapping is very, As in very they map, important. map yeah. every way. It's very, very important. Sure, I didn't even, yeah. after that they said I have no visit. <laughs> and I think it's also very important that we need to reduce screen time. Yeah, it's this, like literally, yeah. mind is screen uh, time. Phones. My, yeah, because my now phone. I read everything. Uh, online i don't even yeah. read i've not read a physical book i i can i kid you not so i was like i do videos i look i do um text everything online it's uh, not good for my eyes it's not so because like me sometimes so one of the things i try to do is that I, I put my phone on um do not dark disturb. mode dark mode yes yeah, mine so, is on dark mode so, so it's not too bright yeah, in my eyes but it still but it does so still, again um drink lots of water always drink water sometimes you need to take time off screen your laptop sometimes you you get itchy eyes or teary eyes because your eyes are dry so you need to 
consciously yeah, blink so have, rapidly like, have, just to um, put moisture in, in, the your, in the eyes, you know. So, I mean, tips and again, we, we have to be focused on preventive care. Yeah, and check up. Go to yeah. your ophthalmologist. Yeah. Go and check. Yeah. Because yeah. it's actually very, very pre uh, mm -hmm. preventable. Mm -hmm. All right, so Jenny, let me come to you. What do you find for us in today's news? Okay. Two Nigerians arrested for drug trafficking in India. So two ladies, Paul Joy and Peace Ilo Bay, were arrested. And they were carrying six kilograms of hypnotic drug called metacolon. And um, I hope I didn't bother about <laughs> And two kilograms of heroin. So it was seized from them. And then they had confirmed that a guy... Um, Oh yeah, that someone, um, a Steven guy from Nigeria had given them um, the drug mm -hmm. to traffic. So it was during that process that they found out and then searched them and realized that they had drugs mm -hmm. on them. So they're going to, since they're residing in India, they're going to be tried and tested there. Mm -hmm. yeah. So someone would leave Nigeria and go... Happening. It's just sad. Just what? How about you, So this is um, FG to include families of fallen heroes in cash transfer scheme. Um, this, um, I mean, earlier on, the federal government had announced plans to include um, families of Nigerian fallen soldiers and members of the Nigerian Legion among the beneficiaries of its conditional cash transfer scheme. The Minister for Humanitarian Affairs and Poverty Elevation. Dr. Betta Edu said this on Thursday in a statement by her media aide, Mr. Rashid Zubar. I mean, this is this is a welcome development. I mean, you yeah. are you are a finance person, um, yeah. so I I really particularly liked the story because mm -hmm. I remember going back to 2015 when I went to the U.S. Mm -hmm. and my aunt is. Um, veteran. Yeah, she's a veteran in the in the Nigerian Army. I'm sorry, in the American Army, and you know I I. So they were going to give her, I think then she had just clocked 30 years in service mm -hmm. and all of that. So they're going to put the medal and all of that. So we're there, her retirement. Mm -hmm. um, when I entered this city barrack in the U.S., I really wanted to become a soldier. A military person. I wanted to become a, me too, because like literally they leave, like everything is, she had so, benefit for everything. Every restaurant we went to, she's always say, don't worry, don't worry, let me pay. I have special discount, you know. Like, so they treat them with so much dignity. So it is only natural for people, when you treat them right, want to lay their lives for yeah. you. So when I saw this, I actually thought it was a good idea. Yeah. I'm just hoping that, you know, they would actually really execute it in a way that it is impactful. Because yeah. my challenge with Nigeria is that we have very great ideas, very germane ideas. But it is um, two things. If I, even within the idea, there's a lot of corruption that happens. That mm. the families, maybe the government might say, we are disbursing, let's say, 500,000 every month to these families. You might not get to them. Get to At the end of the day, maybe it might be 5K that will get to That'll them. Get, so yeah. it's all these things that just sometimes really, really works me up when I, when I see this. But it's a fantastic, mm. very laudable product. Because see, anybody that you that's protecting lives and property. So Folly Heroes, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that it goes across all the military parastatas. So mm. it's not just... The army, there's, yeah. uh, there's the police, there's everybody. So it's a very welcomed idea, it honestly. I just pray that it's done well, it's executed well, mm -hmm. you know. All right, so um, I think I will just take a pause now because my story is actually what we're discussing today. The, oh. to the young girls that actually uh -huh. killed, um, huh, they wanted three so I don't understand the story, but we'll take a break. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation. Stay with us.